suffering. Because of my history, I feel judged. My history of addiction gets in the way of getting the health care I need. The label follows you. What about everything else I've done? I was good at my job. I took pride in it. I would drive with a beer between my legs. I felt the most at home sitting on a bar stool. My life was chaotic. Addicts surround themselves with other addicts. This way we are able to hide the truth about our addiction from ourselves. We can normalize our behaviors. To stay clean, we have to give up everything that is comfortable and familiar. It's terrifying. I was the ballerina, the straight-A student, the teacher's daughter, always a success, always a good girl. I believe people expected the best from me, and nothing else would be enough. When I no longer felt safe to wear any of the good masks, I changed to the party girl, the wild one, the daring one, the girl who could out-drink anybody. I never knew how to just be me. Whether it was the good girl mask, or the wild girl mask, it was always to the extreme. This is where I felt at peace with myself. In my acceptance of sobriety, I learned to enjoy what little calmness and serenity I could during difficult times. People don't think addicts deserve something beautiful. The mountains make me feel connected to something. Connection is everything. My feet were covered in layers of blisters. The pain was unbearable, but sometimes there's beauty in suffering. The gift of my suffering was what led to my eventual recovery. I was in denial about my friend's death. On the street, we have roles. I was a caretaker. I looked out for people. Even in my own despair, I tried to help. This is where I looked after him when he was too scared to go home. He was just a kid. It's like doing a 24-hour famine, then sitting down in front of a plate of food but not being able to eat. That's what addiction and recovery feels like. Every day you are that hungry. When people refer to people like my son as a junkie or addict, it affects their family. It casts a dark, ugly shadow that can make you feel ashamed and alone. This implied shameful dirtiness is the stigma that separates people and their families from community and support services. I've come a long way from that little Indian boy hiding under a bed, afraid to speak. One of the most powerful things I learned was to forgive. My niece asked me to join her Tough Mudder team in June. I did a triathlon in May, and then I raced the Grand Fondo. I'm so grateful to those who made it possible for me to believe in myself. I have a voice. 
I made a choice one day at a time. It's my turn. Standing tall and always smiling from the heart. <laughs>